to go to the paddock, but 21 minutes, he's got Dunbar Road. All right, folks, we've got Saul Cuman here. He's the uh, one of the winning owners of the TVG Breeders' Cup Mile with Uni. And uh, Chad Brown and Joel Rosario are represented in the next race, so uh, it's uncertain whether we'll hear from <laughs> them. But we're happy to be joined by Saul for the second time this weekend. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much. And uh, I know you're short on time as well because you've got uh, Midnight Bizu coming up. So very quickly, if we could just get your reaction to this uh, impressive performance in the mile. It was incredible. I mean, what a turn of foot. Uh, unbelievable ride by Joel. Uh, you know, it's tough from that post. A couple scratches inside helped a little bit to move us over. Um, we were really worried about the lack of pace, and uh, and he, you know, did a perfect job trying to, you know, get her over, save a little bit of ground on the first turn, and uh, I thought he got her going at the perfect time, and uh, you know, got the other filly ran unbelievable, got stormy, and it was just, I mean, to watch those two fillies throw down in a race like this is, you know, it's one of the ones you're going to remember. Yeah, and got, uh, get stormy was her really chief rival this year, or really only rival, you might put it, but uh, just talk about uh, when they met before, and then seeing that rivalry unfold again. Yeah, I mean, you know, the uh, Get Stormy's race at uh, in the Four Star Dave was absolutely spectacular. I think, it, you know, it took a lot of guts from that uh, ownership group to kind of run right back. And I think it was on a less than a couple weeks rest. Um, and, and she ran incredible. You know, um, you know, I thought today, you know, we had some, some good spacing in between races. And um, Chad had really, really was very high in her last breeze. And, um, you know, just she came in and, and did, did everything we could have asked for today. Can you elaborate in a, a little more detail on, on what you were describing in the winter circle about how the partnership comes together? You were one of the original buyers in France and then bringing the other partners in thanks to Bradley. Yeah, sure. I mean, it, you know, Nicholas to watch again. This is kind of a funny story. We were in Dubai I don't know, three years ago or two years ago. Um, Nicholas at breakfast said, hey, I have a filly that you should buy. Um, I think she'd do great in America. Uh, he, you know, put the filly to us. I called Mike Dub. We were able to buy half the horse, and, and Mike's group and our group split it. Um, we brought the horse to America. I remember when the horse showed up in Chad's barn, we were all a little bit concerned because she was so small. We are like, oh, what did we do? She's tiny. He said, don't worry. She, I like the way she moves. We should be okay here. Um, and we ran the horse in partnership with, uh, with our partners in France for the first, I think it was about a year or so. And, uh, and then we were able to, to buy them out and bring in a third partner, it was Bob LaPenta. And so we ended up becoming partners, a third each. And we've had a lot of success with Bob and, and, uh, and with Mike Dub uh, and, and Caruso from Bethlehem and that group. So we've been, um, you know, partners on a lot of different horses. And, um, you know, for us, that's really what the fun's all about. I mean, sitting up here alone, Mike wasn't able to be here. Bob wasn't able to be here. It's not as much fun for me um, without my boys here. But it's, uh, you know, like winning a race like this is, is special, especially against the boys. But since you're here alone, I, I would love to just chat with you about um, your model for success as an owner. You, you're sort of inventing a, a, new, a new model in horse ownership, especially at the highest levels. Can you talk about your philosophy of buying horses, how and when you buy into them, and how much of that uh, was mapped out from your first involvement in racing and how it's evolved to today? Sure. I mean, w when we started, you know, we were really fortunate to meet Chad Brown at the very beginning. Um, and he, you know, just did a nice job kind of teaching us, protecting us, um, and uh, put us into not only some yearlings and two-year-olds, where we got really lucky with Lady Eli at the beginning, um, and then buying some proven horses later, uh, like Slumber and Decida and some horses from some from Europe and also some from South America. Um, and it was really him that kind of put us into different groups with some of his other owners. Um, you know, from th then I was able to meet Brad Weisbord through Chad, actually, originally, um, and Brad had uh, really kind of took that to the next level, uh, introduced us to Nicholas in France, who had been doing a lot of the buying for us overseas, has done an amazing job for us, um, and then Liz Crow partnered with him and, and has uh, been buying a lot of our unproven horses, and obviously British Idiom yesterday and Monomoy Girl last, uh, last year, so... You know, we, we work really hard at it. Um, you know, we, uh, we spend a lot of time. Um, you know, we're always trying to think of, of different ways of doing things that maybe not everybody's thinking about. Uh, we've got a great group of partners that are, you know, game for taking shots on things. And um, we try to be thoughtful. And, and um, you know, it's been a, it's been a great uh, last five years. That was our, our 60th grade one win uh, today, uh, which was great in five years. We're pretty, pretty happy about that. And I saw that incredible picture that Brad posted of all your Breeders' Cup hats spread <laughs> around. Can you tell us how many horses in the Breeders' Cup you had a piece of, and uh, how do you gauge success when you're a partner in so many? Uh, well, yeah, I think we ended up with 11 or so um, that ran. We had a couple that scratched. Um, you know, it, you come to these weekends. We've come here before when we felt like we were pretty loaded, and you walk away with no wins. I mean, it's so hard to win on these weekends. I think 
my expectations coming in here were if we win one race, I'll be happy, and if we win two, I'll be ecstatic. Um, you know, uh, you know, British Idiom yesterday was was incredible. Great ownership group, obviously. You know, having Liz part of our team buying the horse, it just was. You know, Brad Cox, the whole thing was awesome. Um, this filly today, this is you know my kid's favorite horse. Both my uh, both my boys love Uni. Um, you know, she was probably our most visited horse at Saratoga last summer for peppermints in that corner stall on Chad's barn. Um, so, you know, having her win this race today and beat the boys was amazing. And then, you know, we've got a couple more shots here with Midnight Bisu and Yoshida. Um, you know, we'll see. I mean, at this point, we're, we're pretty happy with where we are. So I think, you know, we've been, been, it's been a great weekend. And being a five-year-old mare who just won a Breeders' Cup race, what happens with her now? We'll bring her back next year. Uh, we, you know, we, the partnership talked uh, a little earlier this year, and we, we, it was kind of a no-brainer to bring her back. Um, you know, we talked about potentially trying to go to Ascot uh, to the race Teppen went to, whether it's a good distance, obviously, which you saw. Um, we'll have to do some arm twisting with Chad to, uh, to see if it will happen, but it's definitely something that's on the table. You know, I think the big question now, honestly, is do you give her a break or do you go back and try to win the matriarch again? Maybe she has a chance to be champion. Um, you know, uh, if you kind of think about this, really two fillies that have had amazing years, they don't run against each other. Um, you know, she was able to win this race today. Uh, you know, she's she's beaten the boys here. Her only defeat this year was against the boys. So um, I think she's got to at least be mentioned in the conversation. Um, and I think if she was to win the matriarch and have a third grade one win, uh, it, it would be possible. So I think that's what we're going to have to really sit down and decide because she needs a break, obviously, at some point. So it'll be matriarch and a break or break now and, and see. And there is Midnight Bizu uh, heading to her stall. Do we have any questions before we let stall go? So I know that there was a change of plan after the uh, the race at Keeneland. Uh, what did Chad share with you to kind of say, hey, instead of putting her away for the year, we're gonna we're gonna go forward into here? Yeah, I think it was the way she won. I mean, she really, you know, he said he's had a, a lot of good fillies that we all know. He said the turn of foot that he's seen, you know, that last quarter mile, he hasn't trained any fillies that kind of finished like this before. So, um, you know, he said if you guys are game for paying the hundred grand and. I mean, it's, it's difficult to do, right? You, you sort of look against the boys. You know, you draw the 11 hole and you want to kill yourself. Um, but, uh, you know, we did it. And, uh, and look, he's with these types of horses, there's nobody better, right? I mean, every year you kind of look up and he seems to pop another one and another one. You know, the, the race he won yesterday with the, the, the two-year-old Colt, I mean, that sort of was on nobody's radar. And then, bang, he wins again. And that horse is three for three with a, another Breeders' Cup win. So... He's, he really kind of knows when to press and when to back off, um, especially with these turf horses, and he's advised us extremely well with this one. So congratulations. Good luck in the Breeders' Cup this staff. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs>